Hello everyone, welcome to this session in which we are going to learn how to design synchronous sequential circuits. So at the end of this session you will be able to examine the synchronous sequential circuits and design these circuits with the help of flip flops and some gates. So to design a clocked sequential circuit you need to start from a set of specifications which you can understand from the given problem statement and ends with a logic diagram or a list of boolean functions from which the logic diagram can be obtained. So our aim is to get the logic diagram from the given problem statement. Sequential circuits requires a state table from its specification. So the first step is always a derive of a state table or an equivalent representation such as state diagram from the given problem statement. So it is always better to derive a state diagram from the given problem statement. And from the state diagram you can derive the state table and the remaining steps. You can complete the remaining steps. So the design procedure you can follow to solve these type of problems is listed here in terms of steps. From the word description that is nothing but the problem statement given, you need to understand the specification of the desired operation required. And you need to derive a state diagram for the circuit. So when you have a state diagram, that state diagram can have different states. So some of the states can be redundant states which you need to get rid of. So to reduce the number of state, you have different methods which you can apply and you, you can reduce the number of states from the derived state diagram which results in the more simpler circuits. Okay, means you have reduced here the hardware required for your synchronous sequential circuit. Then after the reduction, you need to assign the binary values to the states. Then you need to convert this state diagram into a state table with these binary values. So the important step here is to obtain the binary coded state table. Then after the selection of the flip flop, you can derive the flip flop input equations and output equations with the help of few simplification methods. And if you have these equations and output e expressions, then you can easily go for the final logic circuit diagram. So this is a rough procedure for designing any sequential circuit. So let us see this with the help of one example. Let us design here a sequential circuit with two flip flops which requires one external input x. When this external input x is zero, the state of the circuit remains same. But when the external input x is one, the circuit goes through the state transitions from 0, 0 to 0, 1, then to 1, 1, then to 1, 0 and back to 0, 0 and repeats. So here the first step is to derive the state diagram. In the problem statement is itself, the number of flip flops, the information regarding the number of flip flops and the state is already given. So we can use this given information for drawing the state diagram. So here is how the state diagram looks like. So here we have the initial state 0, 0. So when x is 0, the next state is same as this present state that is 0, 0. When x is equal to 1, the state is changed from 0 to 1, 0, 0 to 0, 1. When x is 1, the next state from 0 1 is 1 1. Again when x is 1 the next state 
is 1 0 from 1 1 okay means here we have converted this second statement from this problem statement for drawing this state diagram if you look at when x is equal to 0 all the states remains in the same state so with two flip flops circuit can have maximum four states okay so here we have these four states next important step is state reduction if necessary so for complex state diagrams you need to apply different state reduction st techniques which help you to reduce the hardware now this is a simple state diagram with only four states and if you observe this correctly there is no chances of reduction in the states so you can go for the next step in the design procedure so the next step is state table so as i said in the problem statement itself the assignment state assignment is provided information regarding the state assignment is provided so your state changes from 00 to 01 01 to 11 11 to 10 and back to 00 when x is equal to 1 and they all will remain in the same state when x is equal to 0 so from this you can start with this initial state so in this table you will find this table is divided into three columns first column represents present state second column represents external input and third column represents the next state now here the present state is 0 0 x is 0 by looking at this state diagram you can easily identify what is the next state it is 0 0 so we have written this 0 0 value in the next state table here similarly when present state is 0 0 x is 1 what is the next state the next state here is 0 1 so similarly you can complete all the 8 combinations because here you will see present state requires 2 bits and external input requires 1 bit so total 8 combination you can have here so this completes your state table which will be helpful for you to derive the flip flop inputs and output if necessary so the next step is the flip flop selection again here our job is made simple because in the problem statement itself they provided you the flip flop information that is you require to use two d flip flops we are going to name them as a, a and b this is the symbol for a d flip flop we all know what is the characteristic of a d flip flop that is q plus is always equal to d so using d flip flops is very uh, easy design procedure so let us see the next step next step is the simplification of the flip-flop inputs equations and output equations so in this particular design there is no output so that's why we need to derive here only flip-flop input expressions so with the help of this state table we are going to derive these flip-flop inputs with the help of k map so here we are going to concentrate on this a plus column which represents the next state for a uh, as i said for the d flip flop characteristic equation is a plus is equal to d a or you can say q plus is equal to d so here we required to use a three variable k map so after mapping all the max terms and mean terms uh, we are going to try here a sop expression so here we have two groups group one and group two both are pairs so the expression for group 1 is a x bar okay a x bar whereas the group 2 expression here is a b x so here you can write d a is equal to a x bar plus b x so so this is the derivation for the first flip flop input that is flip flop a next is the derivation for the second flip-flop that that is b flip-flop 
So we will map this B plus column on the K map. And we have here two pairs. One pair is also possible, but it is redundant. So you can skip it. So we have here two pairs which are known overlapped unique pairs. So group one expression is E bar X group two expression is B X bar. So this is our expression for the second flip flop D B is equal to A bar X plus B X bar. Now we have two expressions with us. Now if you look at this expression, you can identify how many gates you required actually means as I as I said in the start that we required to use few flip flops plus some gates. So if you look at th these two expression, you can identify how many gates actually you required. So here if you look at this particular expression, you require two AND gates for DA, two AND gates for DB and two, AND, two OR gates for both the expressions. Uh, X and X bar is also required. So one invert is also required. So here is the final logic diagram which requires two flip flops as I said and some gates or circuits externally. So DA is what? So the first AND gate input is A and X bar. Second AND, and gate input is B and X. So DA here you will have is A X bar plus B X. Similarly, second flip flop input is A bar X plus B X bar. So first AND gate input in this section is A bar X. Second AND gate inputs are B X bar. They are all together and are made available for the db. So this is the final solution that is nothing but the logic diagram. You can refer this book for the further understanding. Thank you.